Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to this week's F1 News Roundup. I've got four stories for you today, followed by three more that are worth a quick mention towards the end of the video. Before we get to that though, Mercedes has said that there is no going back for the team when it comes to its low rake philosophy. The last few weeks has been filled with talk around how much the new regulations favour higher rate cars. And come last weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix, it was clear that the advantage Mercedes had enjoyed over its rivals in recent years had disappeared. That said, although they did struggle, Lewis Hamilton still led home a 1-3 for the team on Sunday afternoon. However, Red Bull is at the very least on par with the world champions. Red Bull, of course, a team that runs a much higher rake than Mercedes does. Many have asked the question as to why Mercedes doesn't simply put more rake on the car and explaining why the team's trackside engineer Andrew Shovlin explained that it wasn't that simple and solving the issue of rake would ultimately result in the team having to write off 2021. We've got a car that could win a championship if we make some clever decisions with it, do some good work with it and operate well over the year. But whether or not it's high rake or low rake, we can't do anything about that now. What we certainly can't do is suddenly say we're going to lift the rear of our car 30 millimeters and work with that because that would write off the season. We would lose so much in doing that to recover it, it's just not practical. So it looks as though the new regulations have hit teams that use a higher rate concept harder than those that use a lower rake. But given the fact major changes would have to be made to the rear suspension, for example, in order to move to a higher rake design, which is an area, by the way, that teams are not allowed to develop in 2021. Mercedes and others are stuck with it for this season, but it will be fascinating to see what the clever decision Shovlin hinted at could be. Meanwhile, down at Aston Martin, Otmar Saf now believes that the team has lost up to a second per lap to high-rake rivals, but is not giving up on the season just yet, perhaps as you'd expect given that we've had exactly one race. The impact of the 2021 regulations, as already covered, has caused quite the stir in the paddock, with the likes of Toto Wolf and Otmar Safnau openly stating that they feel the new regulations were made to shake up the order and or to aid teams using higher rate concepts. But despite the concerns and the disappointing weekend in Bahrain for Aston Martin, Safnau is focused on clawing back the time as quickly as possible and understandably will not write off 2021. I think where we've lost is the regulation change. It looks like the low rake runners have lost about a second a lap to the high rake runners. If you compare us to Mercedes, I think we're a tenth closer. But when you compare to high rake runners, they've gained seven, eight tenths or even a second a lap. We haven't given up on this year and we have things in the tunnel and the CFD. Hopefully by the time we get to Portimao, we will have improved the car and we'll work hard at it. The changes were all made around the rear of the floor. So that's where we have to start looking for more downforce. Safnauer added that those changes should result in the car having a better balance and the ability to dial in the front wing. Ultimately though, it looks as though the early stages of this season could well be an uphill struggle for all teams running lower rake. The big question is how quickly can they turn it around? In what is looking like a very tight midfield, a team like Aston Martin cannot afford to lose many more points early on. Next up, Australian Grand Prix bosses have revealed more information about the changes taking place to the track layout ahead of November's race. As was announced, over the winter, the circuit is getting a facelift in a bid to promote overtaking and a full resurfacing of the track will take place between the 2021 and 2022 races. So let's have a look at these changes, shall we? So turn one will be widened by 2.5 metres on the inside, with turn three also getting widened on the inside by four metres. It's a similar story at turn six, but it will get an extra 7.5 metres. But the biggest changes no doubt come at turns 9 and 10, or what were turns 9 and 10 anyway. Instead of a heavy braking zone into a tight right-hand turn, the chicane will be removed and instead drivers will be faced with a sweeping run through Lakeside Drive. The corner at turn 13 has been straightened and widened by 3.5 metres, making it slower and tighter, which in theory should make it more of a viable spot to make a move. And the penultimate corner at turn 15 will be widened again on the inside by 3.5 metres. Once all the changes are made, we will be left with a 14 corner layout rather than the current 16. And Australian Grand Prix bosses believe it could see lap times plummet by around 5 seconds, resulting in a predicted pole position lap of a 115.8. And speaking about the tweaks, Daniel Ricciardo is confident that the changes being made will ultimately result in better racing. Widening some of the apex is creating more of a straight in some places to allow for an opportunity for more slipstreaming was the priority. 
and I'm very confident that it's going to be good. It has been somewhere that's been hard to overtake because of that width and because it's so fast. By changing some of the apexes and creating more room, allowing more chance to make a diving overtake or even change your line to get out of the dirty air, I think it will really help. Ricardo is also confident that should the 2022 regulation changes work as planned, a track like Albert Park could make for, quote, a pretty amazing spectacle. The changes are interesting, that's for sure, and they are the first major changes to the circuit since it debuted on the calendar all the way back in 1996, so perhaps you could argue that they were long overdue. As ever though, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, but you can let me know your thoughts on the changes to Albert Park or indeed any of the stories featured today down in the comment section. Next up, Frederick Vasseur reckons that Alfa Romeo is back in the F1 midfield this year. And you know, although we've only had one race, I'd be inclined to agree. They were certainly one of the surprise packages in Bahrain. The team struggled in 2020, finishing 8th in the standings and picking up just 8 points. And many, including me, were expecting them to struggle again this year and perhaps even right off 2021 early. However, following a strong showing last weekend, which saw his drivers finish 11th and 12th, Kimi Raikkonen missing out on points by just a couple of seconds, of course. Vasseur is convinced that the team is back in the mix. And speaking after the race on Sunday, he said, Tonight gave us a strong indication of the progress we have made in the last 12 months. Even though we leave Bahrain with no points, we do so having reclaimed our place in the midst of the midfield and results will surely come soon. We demonstrated to be able to fight in and around the top 10 and we can look with optimism to the rest of the season. We take a lot of positives knowing we can go to the next race ready to battle again for a place in the top 10. So, there is confidence at Alfa Romeo. However, they will need to watch out going forward because Williams is targeting closing the gap to the team and according to Dave Robson, they only need to find a little bit more time to close the gap and is hopeful that that will allow the team to latch on to the midfield soon. Do you know, we've potentially got such a good season coming up and if Williams can pull themselves up to the back of the midfield and battle with Alfa Romeo as they hope, there is going to be so much to keep an eye on up and down the field. Roll on Imola and of course the rest of the season. I can't wait for it. Right then, before I go, I've got three more stories to fly through super quickly. Pirelli has been testing its new 18-inch tyres in Bahrain with the help of Ferrari and Alpine. Carlos Sainz completed 54 laps on Tuesday morning using a tweaked SF90 with teammate Charles Leclerc pumping in a total of 87 laps in the afternoon. And on Wednesday, Esteban Ocon driving a modified RS18 completed 100 laps followed by Fernando Alonso who completed 64 laps on Thursday. The Spaniard, by the way, said the tyres feel good and teammate Ocon said some things have been positive but there is still work to be done. And just a reminder, the new 18-inch tyres are set to be introduced next season and, well, quite frankly, I think they look fantastic. Red Bull's chief designer Paul Monaghan has confirmed that the team will bring updates to the RB16B in time for Imola, adding that they had, quote, identified some areas where the car can be improved and are focused on that. Monaghan also said that although there was a sense of disappointment within the team at failing to take the win last weekend, he is expecting the battle with Mercedes to be a season-long one, bring it on, and that championship was not won or lost in Bahrain. And finally, a bit of speculation for you. Reports in Spain are claiming that there are doubts around the 2021 Canadian and Brazilian Grand Prix due to the ongoing situation with the pandemic, with it adding that the concerns for Canada specifically centre around the current travel restrictions that stipulate anyone entering the country must quarantine for 14 days. Now, of course, they are the restrictions now, but things could still change in the coming weeks. Should the races in Canada and Brazil get called off, though, the report claims that Turkey and Bahrain, perhaps using the outer loop, could return to the calendar for 2021, with Turkey potentially taking place after Baku in June. It is also worth a mention at this stage that the report does go on to say, or again, I suppose, claim, that Istanbul Park bosses were approached by Formula One to discuss the possibility of the venue taking the May 2nd slot that was of course vacated by Vietnam, but the circuit declined to take up the offer as it fell during the holy month of Ramadan, and so as we know, Portugal took that spot on the calendar instead. Now I must stress that this is just one report and is pure speculation at this stage, but I thought I'd throw it in at the end of the video because it's just worth keeping an eye on. After all, this year's season could once again easily see races called off at any stage. But again, nothing anywhere near official yet, but do keep an eye on it all over the coming weeks and months. 
that is it for this week's news roundup then. But don't forget, you can, of course, let me know your thoughts on any of the stories featured today down in the comment section. And again, what do you think of the changes taking place at the Albert Park circuit? Now, I will be back next week with some more content as always. But in the meantime, if you did enjoy this video, then please do leave a like as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.